All right, well, congratulations. How are you feeling? Thanks, Amy. Uh, I feel a little sore, but I feel good mentally. I took a lot of shots, obviously, more than I needed to for sure, but we'll work on that. Is that kind of the fight you expected to be having with him? For sure. Um, I didn't expect to take that many shots, but absolutely. You know, uh, Gafarov, very, very heavy-handed, sambo, wrestling champion. Uh, but that's definitely his style. You know, I, I did a little bit of studying. I actually watched one of his fights live, so I, I knew what he was about a little bit. Um, very heavy-handed guy. So, yeah, I knew what I was getting myself into for sure. But I also knew that I could take his shots and I could do some damage, and that's exactly what I did. And he wasn't your original opponent. When you had the switch, was, was this one a little bit more exciting for you? Would you have rather have fought the first guy? What, what were your thoughts when you got the switch? Um, to be honest, I think that to an extent, stylistically, they're very, very similar in the sense of they're both kind of wild strikers. I think that, obviously, Gafarov is the much more polished wrestler and more aggressive on the ground. Um, but then you have uh, Moicano, who's a very, very, very good jiu-jitsu artist. You know what I mean? So very similar guys. Uh, nonetheless, though, so, uh, this is my 26 pro fight. You know, I had 17 amateur fights. There's really not much that these guys can show me that I haven't already seen at least once or twice. So, Was there anything in there that surprised you about him? Uh, his resiliency. You know, I, was, I tagged him a couple times hard. I landed that head kick. Um, and he just, yeah, obviously, I think he was hurt, obviously. But the fact that I just couldn't put him away. I, I got to I gotta really dial it in and work on him on... Uh, finishing these fights when I got people hurt. You know, my last fight against Daniel Santos, I, I kind of, uh, I did it, I, I kind of went too hard. I, I had Daniel Santos hurt, and then I, I kind of used a lot of my energy to finish him. This one, as soon as I had him hurt, I literally had the thought in my head, all right, don't, don't overdo it. You know, try to pick your shots, be a little bit more responsible. So now I got a little bit more experience in that category. Now I can find a better happy medium. Can you talk to me a little bit about the headbutt? It looked like there might have even been two in the second round. Uh, what was going through your mind when that happened? To be honest, I don't even think they landed, but they were coming at me and they were they were just throwing me off. You know, I was just like, "What is he? What is he doing?" It, one of them was very, very like I noticed it right away, and he it didn't land. But I was like, "What are you doing, guy?" And uh, you know, obviously it's an Ill illegal shot, but hey, I you can't blame him. He's, he's a guy making his debut. He's got a lot of clout. He's got a lot of, he's, a, he's got a big following, you know, a whole country behind him. He's ready to do anything and everything to get this win in the UFC. So, um, you know, mixed with like the nerves and the excitement of his debut, I, I can't blame him. Was there a little bit of nerves knowing that, you know, he was, I wouldn't say he was the, the favorite necessarily, but he, it seemed like they were kind of pushing him and his story a little bit. Which... <sighs> hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, literally I was in the back and, uh, you know, the, the screen showing the, uh, the fights, right, in the back. I see it, it moves over to Dana White, and Dana White uh, tweets, Tajikistan is ready for this guy and then my, uh, my opponent. And I was like, oh, great. They're, like, really pushing him, you know. And I'm sitting there like, hey, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put the hurt on him for sure. Is there a little motivation when you see that too? Absolutely. But at the same time, man, this game is like a, a wild ride of emotion. So I was, like, I was feeling super confident, and I'm sitting back there, and then I watch his – his uh, teammate, the other guy from Tajikistan, and I just watched him like absolutely um, like put the hands on his opponent and knock him out. And I immediately was like, damn, like these guys are tough. You know, and, and then I reassured myself. I was like, that's, I already knew that. I already knew he was tough. I already knew he was heavy-handed. Um, to be honest, I think watching that fight actually made me be a little bit more on the, on the uh, defense. So I was, my plan originally was to kind of be in his face no matter what and kind of pressure him pressure him a lot more than I did. But then watching that fight and watching the, uh, his opponent get caught, I was just like, maybe I'm going to keep my space a little bit more. So I'm glad it kind of went in that order. <laughs> Can you talk to me a little bit about training in Thailand and how that changed you a little bit? <clears throat> yeah, let's go back a little bit, actually. Let's go back to, the, to November. I actually, up until the Daniel Santos fight, I was working full time, 40 to 45 hours a week, training 30 to 35 hours a week, getting very little sleep. I was always sick, always injured walking really, really chubby. And it's because my metabolism was just super slow, right, from everything going on in my life. Um, after that Daniel Santos fight, which I found out I was fighting with an upper respiratory infection, I said, what am I doing, man? I, like, I, there's no need for me to fight, or I'm sorry, there's no need for me to, to work full time. I'm like, I'm good financially. Um, I just need to go dive in 100%. So I quit my job. And keep in mind, at this point, it was my last fight on my contract with Daniel Santos. I didn't know whether I was going to get re-signed or not, but I took a you know, a leap of faith. I left my job. Uh, I went to Thailand for three months and got some really good training over there at Bangtao, uh, Muay Thai and MMA. George, Frank Hickman, man, those guys are 
top level trainers, you know, the jiu-jitsu coach over there, Alex Shields, and the strength conditioning coach, Woody, they're all super top-notch guys. And uh, it was a good, the biggest thing that I took from Thailand, it was kind of like resubmerging myself into being a full-time athlete and, uh, uh, you know, training two to three times a day, doing all the recovery things that I needed to do, and then bringing those habits, those really good habits back home and finishing camp strong at my home gym, the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy with my head coach, Greg Nelson, my striking coach, Nat McIntyre, my jiu-jitsu coach, Andy Gron, my wrestling coach, Joseph Deshu. And uh, it was just a really good, uh, really good finish to my camp too. Uh, my main training partner, Quang, he's on the up and up. You know, I, I'd be surprised if within the next couple of months you guys see him in the UFC too. So just a really good like last six months for me. Uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, everything. So um, I'm ready to go. You know, this is, I was telling a different reporter, like, uh, this is my first fight on my new contract. I'm fully focused in the sport now. This is, I'm reintroducing myself to the UFC tonight. This is John 2.0. Are you going to um, do Thailand every fight camp, you think, or is it going to be more like? I would love to. I would love, to, absolutely love to uh, go to, th they have $7 hour massages. I, I got six massages a week, you know, it's, it's very cheap, but at, obviously there's the convenience of being at, at home too, you know, and, and having your family and your, your home coaches and your, uh, you know, my, I just got a brand new puppy. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I definitely want to spend some more time in Thailand, but I also love my, my home team here, Minnesota Martial Arts Academy. And when do you want to get back in there? Quick. Um, especially kind of going back to the, being the full-time athlete, you know, I, I've, I've gotten offered a lot of fights. Uh, in the UFC short notice and by short notice I mean anywhere from two to four weeks and I've always said no the reason I say no is because I'm always really heavy you know I'm uh, I'm always 165 plus but now that I'm full-time I'm training more I'm sleeping the, the right amount I'm recovering I'm walking a lot leaner so I'm gonna be saying yes to a lot of these short notice fights and just kind of being more active in general thank you a lot of times when people think about training places like Colorado, they look at the elevation. When you're looking at a place like Thailand, obviously the fighters and the people that are there, the skill sets, you want to be able to partake in that. But what else is it? Is it the temperature? Is it the humidity? What other <clears throat> aspects of, of Thailand really make that training beneficial? Yeah, it's, I mean, the humidity definitely helps. So I, I stayed at a hotel three minutes from the gym and literally waking up getting my coffee, getting my breakfast, and then the three-minute walk to the gym, I was already warm for practice. So, you know, just my muscles are always, I feel like you're, you're less injured over there. You know, you're always warm. Um, but also, yeah, the level of training as well. You know, they, um, they're very, very tradi uh, traditional Muay Thai. You know, they have, like, two subsections. It's, like, an MMA team and then, like, a Thai team. And you can cross-train between all of those. Uh, Bang Tao is a really cool gym where if you have, like, a monthly membership, you can hop between the two classes. So I was... I was dabbling with uh, Muay Thai coaches and really, really working on my striking, but also going to all the jiu-jitsu and all the MMA classes with the Hickman brothers, which are, you know, new school MMA guys. So it was a good combination of everything. And you mentioned, I'm sorry, I don't know, you mentioned something about like a chest illness or something that you were dealing with? Just my last fight, you know, my last fight uh, against Daniel Santos. Um, I don't know if you noticed the difference in cardio between that fight and this fight, but uh, that last fight I actually had a, I was fighting with an upper respiratory infection. And three weeks before that fight, I had strep throat. So I was just like, man, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I'm just always sick, you know? And that wasn't the only time. I was just always sick, always injured, and, you know, just dealing with a bunch of stuff. But it was because my job uh, was a late night shift. So I was working 40, 45 hours full time, um, and I was getting done about 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. And then trying to sleep for three hours, four hours, and going to practice at, at home at 9 a.m. and trying to perform at a high level, you know, it just wasn't happening. So I'm really happy that I made the decision that I did, and now I'm full-time. I was going to say, so now you're full-time. You don't have to worry about it. You're able to focus on training. 100%. And, and was it an immediate different that you could feel that your health, that your overall body was feeling better once you made the switch? A little bit, yeah. So it was, a, it was immediate for sure health-wise, but mentally, no. So I think that it took that trip to Thailand to kind of refocus myself. I found that I found myself that, that that first month after I quit my job, I was kind of still stuck in my same routine, staying up late at night, kind of, you know, doing the bare minimum in training and stuff like that, just because I was still stuck in that same mindset. Going over to Thailand and getting that exposure to just being, you know, not around my family, not around my friends, nothing else to do besides training, picking up those habits, and then coming back home and keeping those habits was really important for me. And last thing for me, you mentioned a little bit about the game plan, and you talked about you definitely want to, didn't want to get caught by any hands, but knowing that you're going in there with a world champ, you know, combat sam sambo champion, was, was the <coughs> training just pretty much drilling that over and over and over, the type of takedowns and stuff that they would try to do? 
to be honest, no. Like, I'm very confident with my, with my wrestling. I've been working with my wrestling coach, Joseph Deshu, who's a Canadian world team member, and uh, my, I feel really, really confident in my wrestling. And um, to be honest, like, the, the, uh, I know that Gafarov trains with, like, uh, Marab, you know, here in Las Vegas, and I was like, I was, for a second, I was just, like, thinking, like, man, me, he's going to be a really good wrestler like Marab. But then I started thinking to myself, like, Marab really isn't, in my opinion, that great of a wrestler. You know what he does have? He has the best gas tank in MMA. I'll tell you that for sure. And he's resilient. But in a, on a sense of like wrestling technique, I, I was I watched a couple of his fights and I'm like, I, how do you? What are you doing, brother? Like you're, uh, you know what I mean? But like I said, nothing against him. He is literally, I think, in my opinion, the best gas tank in all of UFC, and he's resilient as hell. So, um, but these guys, you know, it doesn't matter. I I have really good wrestling technique as well, and I'm very confident in my skills. Awesome. Congrats on the victory. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. John, congrats on that win. Thank you so much. Tremendous performance. <clears throat> Thank you. Was it almost kind of like the perfect? Backstory, you know, like you changed their, your whole life for this, and then you had this kind of like fight of the night showcase. You're like, okay, you you live this life now. Check this out. We're gonna throw you into the fire. For sure, I think that there was a lot of nerves going into that. For sure, you know, a lot of pressure um, for me making all the life changes, and then, you know, I would have sucked uh, making all those life changes and committing myself like I did and not getting the result that I wanted. So I'm really happy that I played out that way, but. I was very confident in my skills, and uh, I knew I was very, very conditioned and very, very ready for this fight. Um, and, you know, at the same time, too, I knew that that, um, that he was, wasn't going to be in as good a shape as me. You know, he took the fight on two weeks' notice. I know that a lot of these guys are training hard full-time, but listen, there's a big difference between two-a-days, three-days training, and then training for a fight. The intensity is different. The output is different. The diet is different. You know, everything is, is 100% different. So... Um, you know, maybe he feels slighted by that, but oh, I, it was my night tonight. I can dig it. And you know, I kind of, I'm, I'm sure a lot of fans are excited when you're talking to Amy that you will now be able to take those short notice fights if now all you're doing is strictly your career. Yeah. You know, forget that other job. Um, we've had a little bit of a theme tonight with the point deductions. How big is that? How does that play into your mindset? Uh, to be honest, I didn't really think it was it was relevant. I think that he did his best work in the second round, and I think that it actually showed that because the scorecards were 29-27. So let's say hypothetically he didn't get a point taken off that that uh, that fight, it would have been 29-28. You know, so uh, still would have been a, a win in my dis in a win my way. Um, but yeah, I it's, it's a weird night tonight, right? You think it'd be Friday the 13th or something, but nope, we're good. <laughs> All right, well, whichever date it was, it, it played out in your favor. Can't wait to see you back in action. Congrats on the win, John. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Good. Good. Thanks, guys. Thank you.